so let's do some cooking. Well, hi everyone, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. You know, somebody bought me this uh, pork pie hat as a gift, and I just had to do a Breaking Bad style intro. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, but you know, it's just one of those things. Pork pie hat had to be Heisenberg, didn't it? Anyway, um, in today's video, um, what I wanted to uh, do is uh, I've had a few people come to me and say, you know, uh, what do you do about pots? You know, because sometimes bonsai pots can be quite expensive. They can, uh, th you know, th th they can be quite difficult to find on a budget, and especially in the current, uh, you know, situation with the cost of living and that. Uh, where do you find good budget bonsai pots? So what I do, if I just reach down here, I I know a, a potter, a local potter called Mo, and uh, what he does is every so often he has like a, a bargain bin or bargain basket outside his door. And every now and again, he puts out what he classes as seconds, but to the, you know, the, the amateur's eye, there's nothing really wrong with them. And he's put out these two pots and I've picked up these for five pounds each. Now, of course, these are originally intended to be like trinket bowls or organizer bowls, or maybe even pet bowls for a small animal. But, um, you know, if you put a hole in the bottom of this, you could end up, with a little bonsai pot and for five pounds plus a little bit of work to put the hole in the bottom that isn't a bad price so in this video i thought i'd show you how, how i'll go about drilling holes in the bottom of these and uh hopefully you know you can you know if you look around like secondhand stores and uh, like charity shops and that you can find budget pots just like this put holes in the bottom and uh create some really you know interesting looking little bonsai pots for your collection but to do this job what you're going to need you're going to need a few things so we start off with this. So you're going to need uh, some kind of a protective mat. So this is just a, a plastic mat, that, like a non-slip mat that you use for shelves and things. This works perfect for this kind of a job. And all this does is just stops your pot from moving around when you're attempting to drill the hole in the base. Then you're going to need a spray bottle. And this is just to keep the surface nice and wet, because of course, when you're doing this kind of drilling, you don't want the bit to overheat and you don't want to crack the clay. So to give it a good spray every now and again, keeps it nice and cool and means that your cut is going to be nice and flush and you shouldn't have that much by way of chipping. Then, of course, we need our bits. Now, the bits that I use to do this are these diamond encrusted circular bits. And these are perfect for drilling big holes. So anything bigger than a standard you know, uh, drill bit or conventional drill bit. And of course, you know, these come in a variety of different sizes and widths. And I think for doing this kind of job, we're either going to need this one or that one. And then, of course, you're also going to need a drill. And then tighten it up. Just like so. And then the chuck, the chuck key, I just have on a piece of string just tied to the cable, just keeps it nice and handy. Just tighten that up so that that bit doesn't come out. And then we should be ready to go. Right, so with this type of thing, it's always best to try to, you don't want to go straight down. You don't want to go boom, you know, straight down, vertical straight away. You want to go in at an angle, get the corner or the side, you know, the side bit at the bottom to bite in. And then gradually, as it begins to bite, then you gradually tilt it in, tilt it in. Then once it, once you get grip on it all, you can gent very gently, don't, don't push down with any great force, but very gently, put, you know, push down gently and you should make your way through this pot. And these parts are quite big or quite thick even. So, you know, it should, it, I, I don't, I've done this a few times with these types of pots and they don't crack. Of course, if you're drilling anything that's a bit more delicate, then uh, you might want to go a little bit easier and just take your time. Don't rush this because these types of pots, well, not particularly these ones, but finer types of pots can crack very easily. So with this, start an angle, gradually go in and take your time. It's most important. So let's, let's begin. So the, the other thing to keep an eye on with this is it, the, the pot might still move. And, you know, even though you do have it on this uh, non-slip surface, 
it, it might still move a little bit. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure you're, you're nice and safe when you do this and uh, just take your time and gradually gradually just take it easy and, and work your way through the pot. But you can see I've gone in at an angle and I already have gone through part of it. So I think just by tilting this up now and gradually going downwards, we should be fine and we should be able to, to make our way through the pot. So what we do is we start the drill. Now the, the thing is, the tricky thing now is trying to get that back in that same groove that you've just made. Let's go again. Wait, that's it. So this is the problem that you have. So it's just a case of taking your time, making sure that you, you try to line it up with what you did before and then gradually work your way in. Hey. And it's not as easy as it may seem. Now we can see it's starting to get a little bit dry. So this is where your water comes in. Just give it a bit of a spray. Make sure it's nice and wet. There we go. And then off we go again. <clears throat> and I can see the, the tripod is bouncing around. So you're probably on a wobbly ride when, you know, as I'm filming this, because I have my tripod on the table. But uh, let's, let's actually rearrange this because looks as though you're on a roller coaster dancing around. So let's put you on a, on a different tripod. So we go. So we just, uh, we can see we are beginning to make an impression. There is, we are gradually making our way through. So we just continue doing what we were doing before. Just take it easy, start the drill, put it in, and then we gradually work the bit upwards until we're vertical. <laughs> Way and we're through. So we just give that a bit of a spray just to get rid of some of the debris and that. Now, I am through, but <laughs> that hole isn't exactly central. Uh, so this, I mean, it doesn't matter too much because it is on the base, and of course, you know, you're going to put your bonsai in there, and nobody usually looks at the underside of a bonsai pot. But I probably could have made a better job and just made that a little bit more central. But as far as you know, making yourself a very nice looking pot. I can see this has very nice texture. I have no idea why this was marked as seconds. It's a very nice looking pot. A little bit of orange colouring just there, but you know, I, I like this in a bonsai pot. I like all the sort of defects and things like that. So I guess these professional potters, they don't. Um, and this is marked as seconds. We can see there is a bit of trip chipping. So what you could do is just with a file, a round file. Just uh, tidy that up a little bit. Just go around that. Just to tidy that up and uh, get rid of some of these sort of nasty sharp edges. But yeah, that is going to be perfect. And of course, if you were, if you're a fan of wiring your trees into pots, um, I'm not particularly. But if you were, you could of course put smaller holes just with a regular drill bit just around here, just to put your wire your, your wire through, and then you'd be able to obviously tie your tree into the pot. But for me, I don't do that. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, so for me. That, that big drainage hole in the bottom is going to do me just fine. So I think we'll do exactly the same for the other one. Right, so pot number two. Now this one doesn't have a, a you know, like a, a ring of feet, if that makes any sense. You know, it doesn't have a raised base. It's just a flat base. So when we come to plant anything in this, we may have to put little blocks underneath or maybe, um, I mean, my benches that I have outside, uh, they are, it's like a grid, it's like a grid, um, a piece of mesh or like a piece of wire mesh so this will be absolutely fine there won't be any issue of of uh, water build up or, or you know flood or drowning your roots but um you know if, if that is an issue for you then you may need to get some little clay feet just to put to the underside or on the underside just to raise that just slightly otherwise you might end up with a pool of water underneath your your tree or underneath your pot but anyway we'll get back to drilling so what we would do is just give that a little bit of a spray and approach this in exactly the same way as we did in the last one.
Hey. That is the problem when you do this. You know, sometimes it does grip onto your bit and it goes flying all over the place. So always best to do this in a somewhere where it's nice and safe. And that's where the gripper mat also comes into play because it does, to some extent, you know, keep it in place. But of course, as with what you just saw, you know, you do need to hang on to it at times. And if you are worried about this, you're drilling a, you know, you're drilling holes in a pot that is quite big, or maybe it's it's very fragile and it keeps on bouncing around. You could put blocks around it, so maybe bricks or wooden blocks that are heavy enough to keep it in place. And so when it does wobble around, it stays in place. It doesn't, you know, spring around like you just saw. But, you know, I've done this a few times. I'm somewhat experienced, he says. <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, I've done this a few times. But, yeah, if you're new and you've never done this before and you're approaching this, uh, approaching this from the first, you know, for the first time, then, uh, yeah, I would use blocks that will hold this in place and just take your time and gradually draw the hole in your pot. But let's continue with this. Hey. And we're through. That one's a little bit more central than the last one. Um, you could, I mean, if you really were that worried about getting your holes absolutely central, what I would do is draw lines, find your center point and go, go from that. Uh, not that I'm trying to be careless with this, but to, to, to me, you know, with, with my collection, if you, even if you were going to exhibit these trees in an exhibition, you're going to have the pot that way around. So my thinking is who, who, who in the bonsai world it's going to take your pot and go, oh, look, the hole is, isn't in the right place. You know, they're not, are they? You know, I highly, maybe I'm wrong. If I am wrong, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, it's just for drainage. You know, and of course, if you did want to be a bit more careful about this, you could mark the center and, and go, you know, approach it from that angle. That might be a little bit better. But me, I just kind of eyeball it, do it. And it's not perfect, but of course, I can put a file around that just to round off those edges. And uh, it will, that would do the job just fine. Put a bit of drainage screen in the base and plant your tree. That should be good. And again, just like the last one, you could do smaller holes around it to put your wire, wire your tree in your pot. Right, so here we have our two new bonsai pots ready for use. So come next spring of 2024, you know, we'll be using these. I've, I've done this. I did a video a few months back where I did a similar thing and I showed you the process of how I go about drilling drilling holes in pots, but uh, quite a few people have asked me, you know, how I go about doing it. So I thought I'd do another one. I picked up two new pots from Mo, so I figured I'd, I'd do another video, show you how I, how I do it. And uh, yeah, it's a really good way to get hold of budget pots. You can pick them up sometimes for, you know, pennies, you know, 50p, maybe a pound, uh, bring them home, uh, buy yourself some crystal encrusted uh, round drill bits and make your own pots. Really, really easy, cheap, affordable way to make your own pots and the thing is if you if you grew a bonsai tree in those pots i think they'd look quite impressive I, I really do i don't think anybody would be able to tell the difference between that and some of these you know some of these more expensive pots that you find you know of course you can get very um expensive well-crafted well-made traditional bonsai pots but to, to create a, a you know very impressive looking tree you know, I think these pots are just a job and sometimes you can find some even better ones, very unique pots and only secondhand stores. Pick them up for a few pennies, put a hole in the base. It's a very cheap and affordable way to, to provide pots for your bonsai trees. Anyway, guys, uh, if you give this a go, you know, let us know, put a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you, what you do. And if you do anything different, you know, that's the good thing about the community, you know, share, share ideas. And, and if you, if you do this differently, you know, let us know. I'll share that out. I'll, I'll share it with the community and uh, hopefully, you know, it's, it's just interesting to show ideas. Anyway, guys, I think we'll wrap it up now. We'll call that a day. So as always, take it easy. Have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.